Right now, an officer and a gentleman, not so much. General Petraeus feeling the hot glare of spotlight after an alleged illicit affair with his biographer was resigning the right thing to do. And did he compromise U.S. national security by sharing CIA secrets with the mistress? And next, behind Obama's big win, we're going to take you behind the scenes for a look at what changed what was thought to be a squeaker into a solid victory. And later, could all of this been avoided, or at least a lot of it. Our guest will tell us how protective barriers could have prevented Sandy from severely damaging not just our region, but particularly Lower Manhattan. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to RFL. I am Richard French, and thank you so much for joining us this Monday evening, November 12th. Now, the brilliant military career of former CIA Director General David Petraeus is now forever tarnished as details of his affair with his biographer Paula Broadwell continue to emerge. But I will say at this point in the evening, we have as many questions as we do answers. Our senior political correspondent, Andrew Whitman, he joins us with the very latest. Andrew? Well, that's right, Rich. The focus has now turned to who knew what and when and if state secrets were revealed during Pillow Talk. We now know the first time David Petraeus met Paula Broadwell was six years ago in 2006 when she was still a student at Harvard. Two years later, he had agreed to let her focus on him for her doctoral dissertation, and by 2010, Broadwell proposed she write his best-selling biography, All In. But now, Petraeus could face criminal prosecution for adultery if any of their encounters took place while he was still in the military. For him to allow the very first biography uh, to be written about him, to be written by someone who had never written a book before, uh, seemed very odd to me. And Broadwell spent considerable time with the general in Afghanistan, but a longtime military colleague came to the defense of his friend today. There was no relationship then as far as an affair. Uh, the affair started uh, after he had been in the CIA, after he retired from the Army. Whenever it began, Holly Petraeus was reportedly beyond furious and devastated. Another area of concern, if Petraeus shared confidential information with Broadwell. Just two and a half weeks ago in Denver, she seemed to speak with inside knowledge about the attacks on the consulate in Benghazi. I don't know if a lot of you have heard this, but the CIA annex had actually um, had taken a couple of Libyan militia members prisoner, and, and they think that the attack on the consulate was an effort to try to get these prisoners back. Now, Petraeus' own timeline reveals the affair for continued for nearly his entire tenure as CIA director, a serious error for any intelligence official at risk of potentially being blackmailed. Additionally, Petraeus' resignation has frustrated some on Capitol Hill because he was supposed to appear there this week to talk about the CIA's response to the attack in Benghazi, Libya. Rich? All right, Andrew, thank you. Let's uh, bring it our panel who's going to be with us all night here to sound off on this. Issues of politics and beyond. Bill O'Reilly, Republican consultant and columnist for Newsday. Dominic Carter, political journalist, author. Richard Brodsky, former New York Assemblyman, senior fellow at Demos and professor at NYU. And Andrew, who we've just heard from. All right. Um, first things first, I'm a cynic maybe, but to believe here that the FBI investigated this guy's for weeks, and I think what I'm about to ask will come out in time, but we don't know the answer yet, and the Justice Department didn't know about it, let alone the White House didn't know about it, as uh, I think it's fairly say and strains incredulity. No, it doesn't. Rightly so. Come this, on. The FBI, this, there was no crime. There was no breach of security, is what the FBI found. We've had a history at the FBI of a guy named J. Edgar Hoover, who, when he found personal failings in people, would take them and use them inappropriately to influence national policy and events. The FBI is not supposed to do anything where it finds no criminal or civil wrongdoing. There was no reason to tell anybody else. They shouldn't have told anybody else. And indeed, this thing unfolded exactly as it should have. Guy made a serious error of judgment. He resigned. It's over. Okay. Well, let me point out one thing and then everybody jump in here. The Senate Intelligence Committee members do not agree with you. Republican and Democrat alike say we shouldn't be finding about this on the evening news. Point two, you had an FBI agent who apparently whether he was reprimanded, whatever happened to him, he didn't like that the thing wasn't going anywhere. So he reached out directly to House members, including Eric Cantor, and says, keep an eye on this. Ten days ago, this thing's not moving along fast enough. And then Cantor gets involved to make sure the investigation continues. Who in their right mind thinks 
that Eric Holder didn't know. And I'm not disagreeing with you. I guess that there was no criminal investigation. You really don't think the Justice Department I knew. think the FBI had learned the lessons of J. Edgar Hoover hmm. and where they didn't have evidence of either criminality or a security breach. They had evidence of a, 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 um, a serious error of judgment in his personal life. They treated it like they should have. All right, Andrew, I know what this side of the table is going to come down in a second here, and they're not with Richard. You buy what he's selling? I do. Uh, I do. And, and I think part of the, the suspicious smell in all of this is the fact that you have those sources going to Eric Cantor to try to keep this thing alive in the week before the election. Uh, just a, a taste of how politicized and how partisan uh, I think this might have been in, in, in that period. Okay, but this wasn't the janitor in the White House. This was the head of the CIA. And for good reasons, we don't want pillow talk with the head of the CIA. Do you think somebody at Justice knew about this before this went to, uh, uh, you know, broke out on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday? Richard, of course this went to the top of the Justice Department. If it didn't go, then I'm sure a, 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 uh, a director would fire somebody if he didn't know that this type of investigation was going on with the director of the CIA and he or she was not briefed on it. Of course. Now, they may have said, I don't want to know anymore, but of course they were briefed on it. Of course. Yeah, I, I totally agree. It's, it's not possible. It's not plausible that an FBI agent would learn about this and that the head of the Justice Department would not learn it. That's, a, that's ridiculous. That's just not going to happen. I mean, because that's you, you, just you not going to happen is the standard of discourse? You, you know? In out. spite of the fact that the you, FBI You have a director of the happen? Central Intelligence Agency in, at a time when, when a lot of foreign espionage is going on, at a very, at a very uh, uh, controversial time going on in Afghanistan, you have a director of the Central Intelligence Agency having an affair. His wife doesn't know it. His children doesn't, don't know it. He's, he's, a, he's a, a, a risk I'm for not, blackmail. I'm saying it's a bad no, no, no. thing. You're telling you're me that members, members of Congress could know that, that no, no, FBI no, no, no. agents could know that's that, but it wouldn't said. go upstairs? That's what you said. He'd be fired if he didn't go upstairs with it. He'd be fired if he didn't go upstairs. There's a hit... You don't know that, and you're calling David Petraeus a liar. Because he's saying that there was nothing criminal, nothing wrong, and no secrets. There's there was no security but breach. Wait, wait, Tom, no, we, wait, already wait. Know, we already know one thing. <laughs> we already know Ms. Broadwell, apparently at an event in Denver, was talking about classified information that publicly. she said publicly. publicly. Right, she okay. had classified and information. Yeah. Maybe she got it wrong, but the point was she was talking publicly about classified information. So now it went beyond just, well, he shouldn't you know, have been doing what he was doing Fox to hold News on a second. lost the election. We have stopped <laughs> speculating so, about so the, people's so, character. So the election's over. Let's talk about it in a rational way. Then. The, the, the Let's point. Stop trying to you don't Let's know talk about that, it rationally. that they were told and are lying about Richard, it. You I know that think they should have been told. Wait, Wait, Richard, Richard, knew about chain it. of command. And this is a rhetorical. Exactly. Justice Department, Eric Cold is the boss. The FBI is doing an investigation. They're not supposed to, forget about the White House now, they're not supposed to funnel it up to the chain of command. Again, we're not talking about a janitor, we're talking about the head of the CIA. When there's a finding by the FBI of no wrongdoing, no criminal wrongdoing, and no security breach, they, the, remember what J. Edgar Hoover would do. He'd get this delicious stuff and he'd blackmail people. So how far up should it go? That. Richard, how far up should Richard, it go? You have there, there is a chain of command of every investigation that's pending, what's going on, and the supervisors are notified. Now, Eric Holder may have been told the, the very minute detail and said, I don't want to know. But the agent, the supervising agent, would be fired if this did not reach the head of the Justice Department. You think the investigating, you think the investigating officer reports upward to everybody on every investigation that leads to no account of criminal wrongdoing no, or I, no I, security? I, as a matter of fact, I know, I don't think. I know that there's a chain of command that goes all the way up to Eric Holder. If for every if possible, if every possible CIA, investigation. If something is found, and... and uh, only if something is found? So if yeah. it's... Oh, Andrew, my own point no. is, if, they, if they're <laughs> conducting an investigation, and this thing all of a sudden accelerated to the point that, oh my God, they found out that this woman passed over state secrets or whatever, and Holder finds out about it, that they've been investigating this thing for three, four, two months, and only now he's learning about it? You don't think he'd go through the roof? Near as I can tell, the only thing that's been found is that he was having an extramarital affair, not that the there were a lapse in security. This and to is be coming, fair to you, this that's is coming out after that, the fact. But that, but yep. that, that is a lapse of security to be having an extramarital affair. Which and he that's, can be, and which that's he can, not no, all it's, that we've got so far. Of course it is. That's absolutely not. He could be blackmailed. You're the mistress. He could be blackmailed. Alan Dulles, the head of the CIA, had affairs during the height of the Cold War. J. Edgar Hoover is the head of the FBI. How many presidents of the United States have had affairs while in office? 
security just, lapse. And so you're just, okay, so that's now a disqualifying event for everybody who's in public life. If, Richard, if, if, if Petraeus' wife didn't know about the affair, if his children didn't know about the affair, if the Central Intelligence Agency didn't know about the affair, that's a security risk. I, I, I forget the family. If, if, if there's no way in the world that you can just say this is just an, aff an affair when it's the head of the CIA. Right. He and I have been no having way, this debate all day. There's no I way agree. I like the So now, now we got to go back in history and get rid of FDR. we got to get rid of Eisenhower. No, we got to no. get rid of Kennedy. we got to get rid of George H.W. Bush. No, it's saying that, well, but Petraeus should have stepped there down. There was an investigation that found no criminal wrongdoing and no breach of security. You may claim that there was a bad investigation, but if you believe that the investigation was complete, thorough, and, and accurate, it, then there was nothing to report up the chain. But how could you not have a breach of security when you have something that big to hide? Okay, well, th th that is a judgment that when you get to be in the FBI, you'll well, make. Well, how about you, but the guys Because wait, wait. I, I know how these two guys, and I happen to agree with them. Nobody makes you swear in to be the CIA director. It's an elective choice. Forget about the investigation for a second. You know what comes with the territory as a big boy or big girl if you're going to run this. To compromise your situation and put yourself, I'm not defending I know the you're behavior. not, but I think it's a resignable he, offense, and, and I think I would have asked for his uh, resignation if I was the president. He did. Then I think we have. And Richard, we only know what we know right now. I have a oh, funny there's feeling. There's, there's, there's a lot more, more to you, this. You, you have, have a funny feeling. Yes, yes I have a funny feeling. Right. No, well, 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 our funny feelings will continue after this quick break. But when we come back, we're going to go back to election night and ask. How Obama not only won, but with the math coming in today, won by a pretty big margin here. And later, we will have an in-depth interview with a storm surge scientist who's going to tell us if all that flooding could actually have been provided, pre prevented, excuse me, easy for me to say. We'll have that and much more after this.